Hello, good morning, and welcome to another Archaeoscope. Now, this series is kind of like an inverted questions of doom. Rather than you sending me a question to try and research and answer to the best of my ability, I put a question out there for you to consider, and hopefully together uh, we come up with an answer which one of us on our own might not have actually uh, come to. Hopefully the conclusion is a sort of a meta-conclusion, one which, uh, which benefits from the opinions of many. And, um, uh, well, this morning's Archaeoscope is, of course, being filmed in the car. That's just because Mrs. Soup has a day off today and she's having a much-deserved lie-in. And uh, just as with the rest of this week, I have an extremely busy day ahead, so I thought I'd fit this in in the morning. But don't let that fool you. Today's topic is extremely important. Uh, it's about whether or not someone getting away with the destruction of a section of a World Heritage Site should be allowed to do that on the grounds that he was simply ignorant of, his, of its existence. Um, should, is this actually a failure of, of, um, of, of administration and the correct authorities in the area uh, essentially not, not monitoring the monument? Um, or actually, is it perfectly okay? Is, is ignorance a valid um, defence? And, um, and the fact that this person hasn't been prosecuted um, is fine. Now, I'm talking about of something called Offa's Dyke. Now, King Offa uh, was a Saxon king, I believe, of Mercia, who was fed up of Welsh uh, people, Welsh folk, with the Welcha, coming in and taking his, li his livestock and gold and so on and so forth and taking it back to Wales. So he, he dug this ditch, this giant dyke, Offa's Dyke, uh, to, to, to delineate uh, Mercia, his kingdom, from Wales, what is now England from what is now Wales. And, uh, well, it was very successful. It seemed to have worked quite well. And it's, it's more than a thousand years old, this long ditch. You can walk the length of it. And actually, ironically enough, I used to live, rather, I grew up actually, sorry, at one end of, of Offa's Dyke. I grew up on the northern end of Offa's Dyke. Um, so it's kind of a coincidence that I find myself now as an adult uh, on the eastern end of Hadrian's Wall. Wall's End is kind of the equivalent of of Prestatin when I grew up, so that's an interesting one. Anyway, um, I just seem to be drawn to borders, what can I say? Um, <laughs> but in this instance, sadly, um, a man has actually bulldozed 50 yards of Offa's Dyke. This is, this is actually a World Heritage Site. It's up there with, for example, the Taj Mahal, the pyramids, um, and it's, it's, it's the equivalent, as one of the archaeologists in the story says, of driving a road straight through Stonehenge. Now the section was about 45 meters um, or 50 yards depending on what, what, what you want to de you know, define it as and, um, and it was being flattened in order to construct stables. The, the man who did the flattening though he said, um, well, sorry, he's calling himself Danny, and he's, he's from the traveling community. And uh, that's sort of Romany gypsy, for, uh, as some people might might want to define them. But essentially, he, he, he's, he's of a certain community um, who might not have had exposure to what this monument is. That said, though, he did say that, he said, I've lived in, in this, this area all my life, and I've never heard of Offa's Dyke. And... Uh, and Initially, my reaction was, well, how can you not have heard of Offa's Dyke? How can you own a chunk of land that has it on and not have someone at least tell you, oh yeah, by the way, over there, there's some Offa's Dyke. It's like buying a, you know, a house uh, with a, a garden um, and underneath the garden, there's a little chunk of Hadrian's Wall and someone not mentioning that to you. I'm pretty sure it sort of is mentioned for protection. But anyway, he claims that he was completely ignorant. Um, the police have said that, uh, and the direct quote is this, um, you have to prove not just the act, but whether there was criminal intent and knowledge uh, that it would be a criminal act. And, uh, and make no mistake, this is certainly, uh, it's criminal in the sense of, uh, it, it's, it's criminal, it's a criminal loss, as it were. Um, there's a particular archaeologist who, who was talking about how um, uh, if you were to rebuild the section of the dike, uh, even if you were to try and restore it in some way, it still wouldn't be Offa's dike. It has been obliterated. It's been flattened and destroyed. Um, so it's 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 a loss which which can't be replaced. It's a loss to a national, if not an international, monument in the land. And um, and the only defence that this this chap's come up with is, is that he didn't know about it. And I suppose my question is, whose fault? Is this? Is this the fault of 
the authorities in the area not uh, I believe this is not too far from a place called Wrexham uh, the, the authorities in the area not making sure that landowners have a, a an acknowledged responsibility for the monument running through their land is this the fault of um, education not making sure that perhaps people who live near to Offers Dyke are aware of what Offers Dyke is um, is this the fault of the police? Should they be able to actually, or what, not so much the police, but rather so the legal system behind the police, should they be able to enforce um, a situation where if you destroy an inter a national monument or an international monument, uh, whether or not you know it is a monument, if you destroy it, then you get a fine of some sort. I believe in this in this article, uh, a fine of something like £5,000. Um Yes, £5,000 could be levied on someone who knows what they, if they're damaging a, a monument like this. But in this instance, again, ignorance was the claim, and ignorance, it seems, was enough to keep him out of, uh, of trouble, despite a nine-month investigation. Now, um, it's interesting in so much as, uh, as, it, as it is pointed out in, the, in, in this article, and again, I will, sh I will share this article, obviously, in the information for you to read, in the video, the video information below, but it's mentioned that this could actually set a precedent. All, all other landowners need to do along the line of, of Offers Dyke is have plausible deniability, you know, have, um, have no official knowledge that, uh, that Offers Dyke is there, and never talk about it, just do something. And then if the police turn up, then you can you can just say, oh, I didn't know, I had no idea, I had no clue. Uh, that is surely a dangerous precedent. And, and as I say, what whose responsibility is it to make sure that, that this could, doesn't continue? Now, in addition to my question over whose responsibility is it, what went wrong, who's to blame, how can this be avoided? I suppose my, the question is also, should this be avoided? Are, uh, are archaeologists and, the, and others simply being too precious about what is a glorified ditch? Now, you, you, know, you can walk the length of, of, of Offa's Dyke just as you can Hadrian's Wall. And uh, many people do it every year. About 15,000 people visit Offa's Dyke every year. Um, but you don't necessarily have to see it the whole way. A bit, little bit like Hadrian's Wall. There are there are places on Hadrian's Wall where farmers over hundreds of years have robbed stone out of the ground to build farmhouses and dry stone walls and so on. Um, and you just can't see the wall for maybe a mile or two at a time, maybe even even further. Um, should we just accept this? That this is just the, this is a, mon a modern version of what was historic. Uh, stone robbing at Hadrian's Wall. This is the modern version of that on Offa's Dyke. Are we being too precious about this? Should we should we actually just let it go and just say, well, okay, you didn't know about it. That's possibly our fault as archaeologists. You should be more informed. We should try to inform people more. Um, or actually, come to think of it, am I just, am I uh, being too, um, what's the word, naive in that sense? Is it one of those things where even if even if this chap had known, and I think he probably did know, he just didn't give a monkeys. He didn't care. So what? It's a ditch in the landscape. Not everyone has a passion for archaeology and history and heritage in the same way that I do, or probably, or quite possibly you do, watching this video. Um, is that really the crux of this? Not even the the element of of, uh, of responsibility being on the on the side of archaeologists and those who who haven't proliferated knowledge about this site uh, enough is it actually just as simple as just accepting that not everyone cares not everyone has to care and sometimes you're gonna just have people who just destroy things because they just don't they don't care they don't acknowledge the the the, the importance of a site or a monument i think there's lots to think about here um and I'm not. I'm trying not to come to any solid conclusions. In so much as I'm not. I'm not quite sure myself. Yesterday, Reese and I had a very brief chat about this, and uh, and he was saying, well, surely that this this is the this is a failing of local authorities. This is, the, this is a failing of site interpretation and dissemination, sharing what a site is. Um, but really, when you're talking about a border between one country and another, it's really hard actually to have adequate interpretation all the way along the length of that border. Um, and while to a certain extent I do agree, I do agree that, that this is probably a failing in some way. This man should have known, if he didn't know, he should have known that Offa's Dyke was on his land. I'm, I'm amazed that he didn't, or that he says he didn't, or that they think that it's okay that he said that he didn't. I'm amazed that he can get away with saying that. But if he actually didn't, 
who's to blame? And actually, to be honest, should we even care? Should it be just as simply as simple as saying, well, actually, some people don't care. Some people won't care. And there'll be many people out there who actually don't even see this as an important story. So what? A man flattened a ditch. Wow. So it's um, it's an important. It's an important and interesting question. So I thought I thought I'd put it out there. I thought I put it out there uh, this morning because I thought that this was an interesting enough uh, topic to visit via Archaeoscope even if I am in the car this morning. And uh, and hopefully there'll be an interesting discussion which follows, because I really want to hear both sides of this. I don't just want to hear from people who are going, yes, this is this is horrific, this is horrible, how dare they um, flatten um, Offers Dyke. Um, perhaps it would be interesting to hear from people who actually say, well, it's, it's a ditch. And you've got another, you know, another uh, dozens of miles of ditch to, uh, to, to look at. You don't necessarily have to look at this section of ditch. Um, that said, though, once it's gone, it's gone. And as I've said in the past, archaeology is like oil. Uh, it's, a, it's a limited resource. It's, it's a valuable resource. And once it's been sucked out of the ground or once it's been destroyed, it's, it's never coming back. And maybe that's the maybe maybe that's the difference. Maybe the difference is actually people should care because it is a one-time thing. It can't be redone. It can't be remade. It can't be can't be reconstructed. As you can tell, I'm hopping back and forth on this one, and very deliberately so, because I want you guys to discuss it. So please do have a bit of a chat about this, and uh, and let's see where this conversation goes. Because um, yeah, I'm not really sure quite where I sit on it. As an archaeologist, I know where I sit on it, but as as a person, as a human being, um, with you know myriad opinions and having to accept other people's perspectives in life, I'm not entirely sure where I sit on this. Anyway, hopefully this has been an interesting uh, discussion for you, and hopefully the discussion below in the comments will be just as interesting. So please do take your time to read over the article. As I say, I'll put the link in the video information, have a bit of a think, and then uh, go from there. This could be quite interesting. Anyway, as ever, until next time, do take care. And, um, yeah, if you, if you live next to an international monument, try not to bulldoze it. Bye-bye.